In this video, we're going to look at an introduction to impact calculus and sort of get the basics down for what to do inside of a debate round. So what is impact calculus? Impact calculus is when debaters articulate what issues in the debate must be evaluated first when deciding a debate. So think about it in terms of this. What are the most important things in a debate? Is it avoiding a nuclear war? Is it preventing biodiversity collapse? Or is it something like the type of education that we gain inside of a debate round versus fairness? All of those things are impacts to various different types of arguments that can occur within a debate. An impact calculus, the job there is to articulate which issue should be evaluated first and is the most important issue that a judge should be considering when they evaluate a debate. I believe that impact calculus is wildly important because this is where a judge has the ability to look at the debate and have it filtered for what is the important issue that they should be evaluating first and foremost. I believe also that impact calculus has one of the highest, if not the highest, return on investment in skill development because it's oftentimes the least technical form of debate that needs to occur, but it's the most efficient way to gain ballots. Because if you can win that staying alive a little bit longer and preventing extinction for a few more years is better because A, we get to live a little bit longer, and B, we might be able to fix the problems that the other team is articulating, in the interim, then it can lead to a lot, of, a lot of ballots. That type of argumentation becomes very effective for judges to be able to decide that they're going to vote for one, t one team over another. And I would also argue that impact calculus is one of those things where the earlier it is done in a debate, the better. So good negative teams are going to start impact calculus inside of the negative block either in the 2 and C or in the 1 and R, they're going to start the process of describing which impacts are the most important impacts and why they are the most imp important impacts. Good AF teams will start in the 1 AR at the latest. And a lot of and some two good affirmative teams are going to start in the 2 AC describing why certain arguments are more important and should be evaluated and prioritized over others. There are three main portions that effectuate impact calculus. So these are the three things that you will look at when deciding what the biggest impact in the debate is. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is probability. And probability simply means how likely is an impact to occur. I believe there are two main ways, two main ways to win probability. And the, even though there's three listed there, there are two. The first two are really about how the debate plays out. So if you were, if you were just out debating another team on the flow, or if they drop some critical arguments, you can minimize probability of an AF, for example, if they concede solvency arguments. That would be a way to lower the probability of their impacts occurring. Another way that probability oftentimes gets framed in debate rounds, which is the second way, is the impacts are seen right now. So we know that racism is ethically bad because we see racism inside of the status quo. We know poverty is ethically wrong and needs to be rejected because we can see the impacts of poverty occurring right now in the status quo. Those sort of arguments as to how we know the impacts, how likely the impacts are to occur, are pretty good. So if they're occurring right now, we obviously know we're on our way to seeing those bad impacts from occurring, and therefore we guarantee they're going to occur. Whereas their made-up disad, it might have a whole lot of steps involved, and those steps that are involved in that disad process are likely to not all come true at once time frame. Time frame is the second big argument that occurs inside of impact calculus. 
time frame asks the question, which occurs first chronologically? I believe that it is one of the most important things that goes underutilized in extinction v. extinction debates. So if one team is claiming to have an extinction impact based upon climate change, and another team is arguing an extinction level impact from a U.S.-China war over Taiwan, you would be able to have arguments about why the U.S.-China war would occur before the impacts to climate change would cause extinction, and therefore, if you want to live longer and possibly solve climate change in the interim, that you have to vote to prevent the U.S.-China war. And so those sort of time frame arguments become super critical in order to be able to uh, in order to be able to win those debates when it's extinction v extinction. Also, allows for the non-terminal part of the impact to turn the case. So what this means is the disad internal link chain will obscure problematize, prevent the solvency of the 1AC from being as effective. So for example, if your impact is an economy impact, there are lots of reasons why economic growth or economic collapse would actually cause more environmental degradation or more climate change. And so you could make those arguments as to why the affirmative can't solve because in a world where the economy has collapsed, those issues become a lot worse. And so the affirmative can't really solve those issues. And those turns the case arguments are reliant upon a time frame argument. Because you have to be able to win that the time frame of those internal link chains occurs before the solvency of the affirmative is able to be put into effect. I will say it again. The internal link chain, i.e., economic collapse causes climate change has to occur before the solvency of the affirmative. And then that leads us to the third and final portion of impact calculus, which is magnitude. And that simply is, what is the biggest impact in the round? What do we define as the biggest impact? What is the worst thing that we must avoid at all costs? And that is the magnitude debate. And so a lot of times, teams are going to describe it merely as, you know, extinction is the biggest impact, therefore it's extinction v. extinction debates. However, there are also lots of other types of debates that can occur. And sometimes those are framed, or most oftentimes they are framed as an ethics argument of some sort. Whether it's racism, poverty, uh, whatever it is, there are reasons why certain impacts outweigh the threat of extinction. And you can have a debate there as to what actually deems itself to be the biggest impact for the judge to be able to evaluate. My sort of final thoughts about Im impact calculus. You want to make sure to discuss how all three parts interact with one another. So sometimes you're not going to be able to win all three parts of the triad. But you can explain why magnitude is something that should outweigh and come before probability or time frame in a judge's decision making process. Or you can do time frame comes before magnitude and probability, or probability comes before time frame and magnitude. All of those things are very good debates that you can have to sort of describe what is the biggest impact in the round and how the judge should be able to look it over. Just remember, the judges are honestly looking for ways to be able to decide what is the one issue that they should be looking out for and evaluating in order to decide who wins. Impact calculus is the process of articulating to the judge what impact they should be the most concerned with, and therefore prioritize that impact over all others. And if you can get good at impact calculus, it becomes a lot easier to get those ballots. So make sure to practice it.